Hello, Finneytown families, and welcome back to this year of 2020 and 2021. I know this isn't exactly how we wanted to start school this year, but I wanted to thank you personally uh, to all the families who have been very patient with the lack of communication and the craziness of this year, as well as our new teaching methods that we have to implement this year. Thank you for all of your patience. Um, I am Miss Schaefer. I will be teaching physical science this year for ninth graders. If I could direct your attention to the screen that I'm showing right now. Um, so the class is called physical science with me. If you were wondering how to spell my name, that is how to do it. Um, on the right here, I have the Google Classroom codes for your children. Um, so once they get their schedules, uh, they can see what bell they will have me if you have ninth graders. And then they can type in this code into Google Classroom and then get into my class. So for example, if your child is supposed to have me on bell two, they would type in this bell two code right here and then um, they would get into that class. Uh, also at the very bottom here, let me hide that. Um, I have my contact information. So this number right here is my personal cell phone number. I will let you know that I will not answer calls after seven o'clock unless they are an emergency. Um, so use that as you will. Uh, and also my email. I will say, um, even though I gave out my phone number, email is probably the best way to reach me. I always have it on and I can respond quicker to them rather than a call if I am busy. Uh, but that is my school email that is available. So now I'm going to take you through a overview of my course if your child does have this class. So this is my syllabus for the year. Your students will get this too. It will be in their classroom. Um, so at the top here on the top right, I have my contact information again. Uh, if when we do get back to school, I am in room 341. Again, this is my email right here. This is the school phone number. So during business hours from uh, 745 to 3, I can be contacted by this number. Um, the extension for my number is 341. Uh, my office hours are on Wednesday. They're from 2 to 3. Uh, your children can schedule any time with me if they need help on something, if they just have questions. Um, and I will be available from that two to three every Wednesday. And we'll get a little bit more into that as well. So if we can continue down here, uh, right here is just a brief course overview of the topics that we will be studying this year. Uh, we will be starting with the study of matter then moving on to energy and waves, forces and motion, and then the universe. And that just entails galaxies and stars and stuff, astronomy, pretty much. Um, so continuing to move down, I have my fundamentals of success. So if your child does these three things, they will pass my class and become better human beings. <laughs> better human beings. Anyway. Uh, work hard and do your best for everything that you do, even if your best is 80% some days. Um, all I really ask is to just try. If your student gives me some type of work, they really cannot fail my class. Uh, I don't have it set up that way. As long as they put in the effort, they will pass the class. Um, suggested materials for this class. I think that is hilarious because what am I supposed to say? A Chromebook? <laughs> so um, I just put some suggested things that uh, would help your student uh, this year for my class. We have notebook paper. I put that on there just in case your student would like to take their own personal notes or um, we do do uh, math in this science. So if they wanted to practice some math problems, I highly recommend getting some form of paper. Um, I, this one I bolded because I would like this for my class. Um, a folder labeled science in their Google Drive. If that could be done before September 8th, that would be fantastic. Um, if not, we will be spending time in class to do this 
uh, so that way your student is organized for my class. Um, I recommend using a pen or a pencil. Again, that's only if they want to take their own personal notes. That's completely up to them. Uh, Chromebook, obviously, and then a calculator. Since we do uh, math in this science class, I recommend a calculator. They can use their phone calculator, um, any type of calculator. I personally recommend the Texas Instrument of any kind, um, except the TI-84 or the 84 Plus. Those are graphing calculators. You will not need those. Plus, they cost like a hundred and some bucks. Just get a normal basic type of calculator. They can even use their phones once. As long as it adds, subtracts, multiplies, and divides, you're good. Um, if we continue down here, I have the daily expectations for virtual learning. So this is when we have class time, uh, live class time. This is kind of what I expect um, to be going on during those times. So uh, number one, do not be late for virtual class time. I will be conducting virtual class time through Google Meet. Uh, it works better with the students' Chromebooks, which is why we chose to do that. Um, so please do not be late. If the class starts at 8, please be in the meeting at 8. Not logging on. I want you already in the meeting, please. Uh, this is just for, it's hard to conduct and when I'm waiting and having to let people in, it just makes it much easier for me, please, um, if we do that. Um, I ask students to please mute their mics when they are not talking. This is so there's not a whole bunch of background noise going on and other students can focus and I don't have to talk over top of that background noise. Um, if students need help, I ask that they ask it in the chat. Um, so when you do a virtual um, classroom, there is an area like a little text box on the side where they can type that is called the chat. I ask that questions are asked there um, if I'm in the middle of teaching. Uh, that way, so it's, it's not a distraction and I can answer that much quicker. And also, if I don't get a chance to answer it during that time, I can always write it down and then email that student and, and contact that student um, anytime rather than them forgetting their question. Uh, I ask that kids be respectful and kind to others during virtual class time. So following the same behaviors that we would see in normal school, no name calling, no cussing, no acting inappropriately. Um, do not use the chat for inappropriate things. So do not flood the chat with just stuff that's in school, not school appropriate. So cuss words, um, things that we're not talking about in class, uh, things of that nature. Um, I ask students to be appropriately clothed during class time. So what goes for dress code? at school should go for dress code for virtual time. I really don't want to see students not wearing anything appropriate to school as well. So violating those dress codes, no bueno. Um, if you get knocked off the session due to a bad connection, don't freak out, don't panic, just let me know. Send me a text, send me an email, a Google voice, whatever. Um, just let me know. Google Meet works through a link anyways. So if they click back on that link, it should take them back into the video. So if you're wondering how to do that, that is just let me know. Don't panic. Um, next below is homework. Uh, not to be confused with our traditional definition of homework. This is just schoolwork that you're doing at home when we're not in class because since I only see students two times a week I need to them to be working on something while we're not together. Um, when students are assigned work I just ask that it be completed by the due date and if they have any questions to contact me via email or google voice. Feedback for work will be given out as swiftly as I can. Like I said earlier, office hours are two to three on Wednesdays. Um, but I, I, I'm not saying that's the only time I grade, but I will get things out as soon as possible when I have the time for it. Um, late policy is the next thing. So I grade based on a point system. 
Uh, and I, this is a project-based learning environment. So meaning that I don't lecture and then just give a test. We work through projects and um, we see how science is used in our everyday lives. Um, as long as that project is going on, I will accept work for that project. Um, however, that being said, if you turn it in past that due date, points will be taken off. Now, those points vary between uh, how much points the assignment is worth. So, for an example, if they're doing like a question of the day that is worth five points, they turn it in three days late, they might get a two or three out of five rather than a five out of five. It just depends on the amount of points the assignment is because they're not all the same. Um, and then finally, for late policy, rubrics cannot be turned in late. So every project has a rubric. That's how we grade the project. Um, those cannot be turned in late because they get turned in. That is the last thing students turn in for the project. Um, and if I don't get those in when I need to, I can't get them graded in a uh, reasonable amount of time. So I just, I don't accept those late. So get those done and turned in. ASAP. Um, the next thing is uh, just a little overview on Google Classroom and Google Meet. Uh, first of all, I want to apologize because I, I know that you're going to be overwhelmed with constant Google Classroom codes, Google Meet codes, all these kind of things. And I just thank you for your patience for um, hanging in there with all of that. Uh, this was just the only way that we could do and teach. Um, so. Getting into Google Classroom, uh, students will be expected to complete their work and turn it in on Google Classroom. Uh, daily class time will be conducted through Google Meet every day per, or cl every class time per each period. So if your bell is from 8 to 8.30, you should be there from 8 to 8.30, unless I send you off to do independent work. Then you, you don't have to sit there the entire time. Um, also, one last thing I'd like to mention is that students are to use their student emails for both Google Classroom and Google Meet, okay? So if they, the reason for this is they don't use their student email, they're not going to be able to access those things as easily. So please use your student emails to get into Google Classrooms and to the Google Meets. One last bit of technology that I myself am using and the other ninth grade teachers are using is something called Flipgrid. Now Flipgrid is just a, um, think of it like a school appropriate Snapchat is pretty much what it is. So this is how I will be taking attendance this uh, year for every day. So students will be given a question of the day or a QOD and they will record the resp response to the question and, and submit it. That's pretty much all of that, all that is. If you do not turn in the daily question of the day, you will not be counted as present for that day. So please get those in. Another thing about the Flipgrid as well is that if you turn it in after your class period time, I will not accept that, all right? So if your bell again is from 8 to 8.30 and you turn in your Flipgrid at 8.35, I will not accept it because you need to turn it in during class time, okay? Uh, next is Progress Book. Parents, you already know about Progress Book if you've been in any type of school system for quite some time, especially here. Um, parents are encouraged to check their Progress Books regularly. Um, I also wanted to point out that parents can also set notification alerts in Progress Book. So this can be for things that if you have your student has missing work, uh, if your child has a low grade or a missing assignment, it will send you a notification letting you know that that has happened. Um, so I, I recommend that. That would make it easier virtually uh, during this time as well um, to keep up with that. I recommend that. Uh, if you need to sign up with that, you need to go to the Finneytown District site and log in with your username and password. If you need that information, you need to contact the counseling department. And I left that right there as well. All right. Uh, the final thing that I just wanna go over really quickly is grading policy. 
And the only reason that I wanted to mention that, and I won't go through the whole thing, is um, I grade students based on a point system. So their grade is going to be vers the points that they earned versus the, the total amount of points, okay? So every assignment is worth some type of point value, and then they will get their grade based on um, things that they do, correct answers, all that kind of stuff. Uh, what is unique about my class, though, is that I teach uh, based on mastery. So I don't really grade students that they're right or wrong, as long as they get it right at some point. Now, what does this mean for your child? Uh, this pretty much just means that if um, they, like, say, flunk an assignment, they missed almost every single question, um, they can actually correct that assignment and turn it back in to get points that they missed back. And I mean, they can get, they can keep doing it until they get a 100. So there really is no excuse to fail my class because they can keep doing an assignment until they get a 100, unless they turn something in late. They cannot get points back for a late assignment, okay? Now, I'm not saying they can't do it at all. I'm just saying that if I take off some points for it being late, they can't make those points back up is what I'm trying to get at. Um, they can even do this with tests or quizzes. So if they flunk a test, if they weren't in their right mindset and they do really bad, um, they can come and have a conference with me. And then we talk about the questions that they missed. And then they retake the questions that they missed to get points back so they can get their grade bumped up. Um, this does not work for midterms or finals. That's just because that is state policy. I can't do that even if I wanted to. Which, um, and also another thing is that students cannot retake tests or quizzes during class time. This has to be outside of class time that they can do that. And all they gotta do is let me know. This can be through email, Google Voice, office hours, whatever. And we will, and I will set that up, okay? Um, projects, this is just letting you know that this is a project-based learning class. Um, and that assignments can range from multiple uh, written assignments, participation, math problems, and critical thinking. And again, this is all through Google Classroom. Rubrics, I told you that about that earlier. Uh, so rubrics are supported by the Ohio State Physical Science Standards. And um, the cool thing about the rubrics is, is that students actually grade themselves on how well they did the project and what grade they think they deserve. Uh, the only catch with that is that I also fill out my own rubric and I the grade that they end up getting is a mixture between the grade I give and the grade they give themselves. So that way it's fair and I can see both sides of the story and they can see mine where I'm coming from because each rubric has an evidence section where they will write like, I think I deserved a 10 because I did all my work, all my homework. Um, I paid attention in class, I took notes and all that stuff. That is great evidence. I, I think it's a really cool system because I get that student feedback as well. Um, and then tests and quizzes, pretty much like any other assessment, except they can be corrected. Well, I am so excited to see your students virtually uh, this year. And I hope I answered all of your questions. If you have any more questions for my class, you have my contact information and just let me know. And I'll see you guys on September 8th.